So let me just get a closer look. How many were here the last time I was here? Okay, so I'm gonna come out. I'm not gonna hurt anybody. <laughs> I just like to be close to people and I also like to look and see who are these crazy people that get up this early to come to church? You must have important things to get to today, huh? So, here we are, it's Consecration Weekend, Consecration Sunday, where we talk about things like stewardship. How many people know what Jesus talked about most in the Bible? What's the one thing that Jesus talked about? Y'all gonna have to talk back to me now. Y'all can't just... I mean, I know what my sermon said. I know how the sermon's gonna end. I'm talking to y'all. So, what did Jesus talk about most in the Bible? Money. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to mess with y'all this morning. We're going to have so much fun. We're going to have a great time. So what did Jesus talk about most in the Bible? I'm just going to talk to Pastor Meredith because y'all need some help. Let me talk to Pastor. Pastor Meredith, what did Jesus talk about most in the Bible? How about love? How about uh, friendship? How about feeding the poor? How about grace? How about living a right, holy life? Money. Money. <laughs> so now what is the one thing pastors dread preaching about? Money. Money. Woo. So that's why people like me get invited. Because <laughs> if y'all get mad at me, I'm just going home anyway. So, you know. <laughs> I love preaching at other people's churches. What are they going to do to me? <laughs> so, I got some good news for you. The good news is, is that in this congregation is more than enough money to meet every financial expectation, your wildest dreams that you have for the ministries here. The money that we need is here. We have the money. That's the good news. The bad news is it's still in your pockets. <laughs> There's this, uh, something like a joke. I, I, so this guy, he's on his deathbed. I know it starts out pretty bad. I know, I know. So he's real sick and he's in the hospital and Pastor comes and he says, oh, pastor, pray for me. And if God heals me, I'm going to give $100,000 to the church. Woo, so pastor is praying. <laughs> pastor is praying, come Holy Spirit and heal this man. So the man is healed and pastor gives him some time. A couple months pass and he goes over to his house and he says, hey, brother, you remember that promise you made? And the guy said, huh? He said, you remember when you were really, really sick and you, you promised that if God made you whole, you would give $100,000? He said, $100,000? I must have really been sick. <laughs> I didn't say it was a good joke. I just said I had a joke. One time I was, I went to seminary in uh, Chicago at Lutheran School of Theology in Chicago. And um, the, the lottery was up to some obscene amount, I can't remember what it was, and I'm walking with uh, uh, another seminarian, John Halverson, and we would walk after class, we'd walk home together to a certain point, and then his apartment was this way, mine was straight ahead. So we're talking about all these wonderful things we would do if we won the lottery. Neither of us had bought a ticket, but you know, we're just talking. All these wonderful, awesome, mighty things we would do, you know, making ourselves feel pretty darn good. So he goes his way, I go mine, I put my key in the door, and I hear the Holy Spirit say, please, girl, you don't do right with the little bit of money you do have. I said, what? What you gonna do with $30 million when you can't handle the little bit you do have? <laughs> Listen, sisters and brothers, sometimes in church we feel like I put my money in that offering plate and doggone it, Pastor Meredith had better do what I want her to do. I mean, I'm paying her salary after all. Oh, y'all get quiet if you want to. <laughs> I'm a pastor, I know what folks say. 
They said, well, I'm paying for her salary anyway. And did you see she got her nails done? Well, yes, I did get my nails done. You want to know why? Because I like glitter. <laughs> there needs to be more sparkle in the world and not less, and I'm just doing my bit to help mankind. <laughs> and some people, I feel, I don't even know who I should look at. I don't want I just look at David. We're not from here, right? I just look at you, David. You know, sometimes it's like the people that give the least amount have the most complaining to do. Have you found that? See how they got quiet on me? Have you found that to be the case? They give 20 big dollars a year. And then they want to stand over the church council and say, now I want 12 of that to go directly to, I don't know, XYZ fund, but I don't believe in, in, in this ministry, so I don't want my $3 to go over there, and then I don't. What happened in the Old Testament when people gave offerings? Anybody remember what happened? They what? They burned them. Say what? Yes, they did. They brought all their offerings into the temple, laid it on the altar, and set it on fire. When we bring our offerings into the temple of God, we release it and we leave it there. We release it, we let it go. You've heard people say, give until it hurts. I heard a pastor say once, give until it doesn't. You bring your offerings into the church and you lay it down and you release it. Because at the end of the day, we're not giving an offering to Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Menominee Falls. We're not giving uh, an offering so that uh, uh, ministry can continue. That's just the blessing part. We give an offering because God has blessed us in order for us to be a blessing. We give an offering because that is our way of responding to the wealth that we have. That's why we give an offering. It's part of worship. It's just as much a part of worship as anything else that we do on a Sunday morning. It's part of worship. And it connects us with every believer of every time and every place. It's more than just, I have 25 extra dollars, I, I might as well give it to some nonprofit organization, I might as well be the church. It's a commitment that we have made to God in response to the many riches that God has lavished on us. We serve an extravagant God. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. Let me look at my watch. In the baptismal waters, there are stories. I think it's uh, Reverend Erlander talks about the storied waters. So in that baptismal water, every believer of every time and place, their story is in there. See, Adam and Eve's story is in that water. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their stories are in that water. You know, the three Hebrew boys, and, and, and they wanted them to bow, and they said, we will not bow down. It's in that water. The widow of Zarephath that said, I'm just going to eat this little bit of, of meal, and my son and I, this is going to be our last supper, and we will die. But the prophet came and blessed that oil and that flour, and it did not go out, she's in that water. When the prophet Amos talked about justice rolling down like a mighty stream, it's in that water. And it unites us with every believer of every time. And when you were baptized, wherever it happened, that story is there. Your story becomes part of the divine story. Likewise, when we gather in a few moments to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do so in the presence of that great cloud of witnesses, where every believer of every time and place is present. We don't do this in a vacuum. We do this with all of Christendom. And likewise, sisters and brothers, when we bring our offering 
we bring it with every offering that's ever been laid at the altar of Almighty God. So think about it. We do not bring this offering to Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Menominee Falls. We bring our offering to the one God, Jehovah, Jireh, who provides for us. That's who we give our offering to. We give our offering to the God who created the earth. Huh? Rolled it around in the palm of his hand. Just hung it out there. Reached into her pocket, pulled out some stars and just... This is the God who we bring our offering to. Not to Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Menominee Falls. We bring our offering to the God who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky. That's who we give our offering to. We give our offering to the God who said, I am the A and the Z, the Alpha and the Omega. That's who we bring our offering to. Come on here. We bring our offering to the God who says, you know what? Humanity needs me. I cannot stay in heaven. I'm coming down there and I'm putting on flesh and I will dwell with them so that I can save them. That is who we bring our offering to. We bring our offering to Jesus, the Christ who walked on water and asked Peter to come on and join me. That is who we bring our offering to. We bring our offering to the Savior who fed 5,000. Huh? with just a couple of loaves of bread and some fish. That is who we bring our offering to. So you think about that when you fill out that commitment card. All the blessings that God has lavished on you. Come on, we bring our offering to the man who said that I will die for these people so that they can live for me. That is who we bring our offering to. And I don't know what's going on in your life. We all have our problems, but I'm telling you that we bring our offering to the man who could not be stopped by death and hell itself. We serve a God that rolled that stone away. And whatever is going on in your life, we have a God who is in the stone rolling business. We serve a God who moves mountains just for the fun of it. And a God that we serve, oh, is mighty. I say this scripture almost every Sunday just because I love it so much. The Bible says that the clouds of the air are the dust of God's sandals. That's a big God. And that is who we bring our offering to. <sighs> Sisters and brothers, the good news for us today is God's reign is among us. And God is moving in and through humanity. And crazy as it sounds, God uses us to be a part of God's activity among the world. Sisters and brothers, sisters and brothers, when we give, we give as unto the Lord. And it is just our simple way of saying thank you, God, for all that you have done for us. Let the church say amen. amen.